This week on QDO, we talked to Nobby Osman, one of the winners of Zeiss's 2020 Measuring Hero Championship. Uh, Nobby won in the category of smallest measured component. And we'll talk to Nobby when we come back. Welcome back to QDL. QDL is your weekly look at who and what is making news in the world of quality. I'm Dirk Ducharme, Editor-in-Chief of Quality Digest. Well, Zeiss Metrology uh, recently announced the winner of their Measuring Hero Contest. And this is an award that's given out in seven categories. Uh, the overall award is for Measuring Hero. Then there's Measuring Team. And then there's five other categories, uh, one for Globalization, education, machine performance, and biggest measured component and smallest measured component. And our guest today um, was the winner of the smallest measured component. And we met with him over Zoom recently. His name is Nabi Osman of Osman Respondings Technic, which is a small machining uh, operation in the Netherlands. Uh, they do a variety of contract jobs, uh, things like uh, wire EDM, die sinking EDM, honing, lapping, surface grinding, cylinder grinding, a wide variety of precision uh, machining operations for uh, kind of a, a diverse clientele. Um, but they also have a contract measuring lab, which includes a Zeiss Contura CMM with a vast scanning head, uh, a vast head, and um, I should say probe, not head. Uh, and uh, this is what was used to measure a very, very small part, as we will learn from Nabi Osman. Nabi, thanks for joining us. Hi, Dirk. Thanks for having me. And by the way, your Dutch is excellent. <laughs> Thank you. I practiced. Um, ah. So <clears throat> before we get started into, uh, uh, into being one of, the, uh, one of the winners of the uh, uh, Zeiss uh, metrology hero, <clears throat> measurement hero challenge. Tell us a little bit of, about uh, about your company and, and what you do. Well, we do um, contract work like uh, wire EDM, sinking, die sinking EDM, honing and flat lapping. Um, so it's uh, precision stuff. Uh, and apart from that, we have a uh, measuring room uh, to inspect our own parts, uh, but it's also available to our clients. So we do contract work on the CMM which is on this side and um, the roundness measuring machine on the other side. And, and I mean, you, you sent me a video, you kind of walked through uh, your, your, uh, uh, your machine shop there. Uh, it looks like you have a, a lot of different uh, high end uh, machining equipment. Uh, I mean, you mentioned you've got a couple EDMs, uh, you've got, um, uh, you do honing and cylindrical grinding, and I think you said you have a couple different lapping machines, uh, CNC. Uh, what kind of business do you guys do? Who are your customers mostly that you need uh, of this variety of high precision machining equipment? Well, we're a precision tool room, so we can make um, uh, parts ourselves that are uh, one or two steps uh, more precise than the average um, uh, milled or turned part, uh, but the last years we get to do uh, just the EDM part or just the uh, the lapping. So our clients uh, can do the the milling and the turning. Uh, they send it over to us to do the well the the, the fun part, which is uh, sinking um, a square hole or just lapping one surface, and that's um, uh, well what we like to do. So uh, in in that way, everybody gets to do what he's at, he is best at. Um, so that's the the current situation. And, and you've been you've been doing machining since you since you were a kid, from what I understand. Well, um, uh, my parents started the company when I was uh, six or seven years old, and um, uh, my parents got to work many hours. Uh, so uh, in the weekends and in the evenings, I spent uh, my time at the shop of my parents. Uh, what do you do? You, know, you get to play with the equipment. Um, so at the age of 11, um, we just got the manual CMM in, uh, our first CMM, and I just started playing with it. Uh, so I actually uh, programmed the thing um, to measure some parts um, at the age of 12, uh, 11, and it was great fun. Wow. So wh what got you interested in, in entering the, uh, the contest with Zeiss? Um, earlier this year, we uh, purchased uh, the beast behind me, uh, 
of which we are quite proud of. Um, having as ICMM for such a small uh, shop. Um, and um, first, Zai started um, uh, having the, these vlogs on uh, YouTube, um, showing uh, all their products uh, which, uh, in a, well, in a laid back way. It's very interesting. Um, and after that, they uh, announced that there was a contest with uh, seven categories, uh, one of which was uh, the, uh, the the prize for the smallest measured object. And I thought, well, that is great fun. I have to compete. Um, <laughs> uh, and that's how it went. And, and describe, the part, uh, describe the part that you measured. And we'll, we'll run some video here that kind of shows it. But why don't you just describe a little bit of what you got there? Well, the, the part itself was a, a plate, uh, 0.4 millimeters square, uh, 0.03 millimeters uh, thick. In Imperial, that's uh, 16 thousandths of an inch square and uh, 1.2 thousandths of an inch uh, thick. Um, uh, I've made it for a, a client whose client uh, produces uh, hearing aids. So I guess it's some, sign of, some kind of uh, contact or a spring or maybe both, I don't know. Uh, we usually don't uh, get to hear what the thing does. We only get the print uh, and we get to produce or inspect uh, the part. Uh, by so print. you said it was, it was point... 0.4 millimeters, 400 microns? Correct, yeah. Square, and, and, and then, and then uh, 40, 30. 40 microns thick? 30, yeah. Oh, 30 microns, okay. So that's, I was wondering if that was an actual part or whether you just created that just for, for the contest, but this, this was actually a customer part. Yeah, we do, um, uh, we produce um, several parts uh, like that. Usually they're a, a little bit bigger, uh, but this was, this was one of the smaller ones. Okay, and you're, you're, um, uh, you measured this on a, a you, you mentioned it's a Zeiss CMA, a Contura, I believe. Yeah, correct. We're using a, a, a scan, uh, I guess what, a scanning head, uh, um, the, vast, uh, the vast head on the, on the Zeiss, which I believe is, I think they call it a scanning head, is that right, or a scanning probe? Yeah, it's a scanning probe, and um, I think it's a, a great thing. Um, I have been using CMMs before uh, with um, single point touch probes, uh, and I was very, uh, well, uh, did all the things I needed the CMM uh, to do, uh, but the active scanning head, just like this one, it's a whole different thing. It's really uh, so much better than a single point touch probe. Um, it can sense the uh, on, w on which side of the probe the material is. Um, you can uh, dial in the, the probing force from uh, two grams to uh, 100 grams. So it's uh, uh, 0.1 ounce to uh, maybe 30 ounces, um, all by software. It's a great thing. And um, well, I wondered how I could do without uh, all the time. And it's, it's, it's a, also a very accurate, uh, it's, a, it's a very accurate probe if, uh, if I remember pr uh, properly. Yeah, the probe is um, very precise. Um, with other brands, you only uh, choose the active probe uh, on the high-end machines. Uh, with uh, Hexagon and uh, Mitutoyo, they offer um, active scanning heads as well, but only on the top end of their uh, product range. And at Zeiss, it's more or less standard. Uh, I don't know why, but uh, I can certainly understand uh, it's a very convenient thing to have. Um, it can scan uh, very fast. Um, yeah, it's a beautiful uh, piece of technology. So let's let's talk about your measurements. So you measured this very very small part, uh, 400 microns by 400 microns, uh, 30 microns uh, thick. Uh, what are the challenges of measuring a part that's that small? Well, the, 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 the biggest challenge uh, was uh, clamping it. It, was, um, it took some time before I got the hang of it, uh, but in the end, the, it worked. Um, I first took a, a toolmaker's vise uh, to clamp the part, um, but the, the, the vise had a 0.5 millimeter camphor. It's, uh, it, it was bigger than the part itself, so it was totally <laughs> useless. Uh, so I had to uh, find another way to do it. Uh, I got a, a, a sort of intermediate uh, piece uh, between the part and the device, and I clamped the part uh, like this, so uh, of a, only on a quarter, allowing uh, two probes to access the part uh, on all six sides, because okay. the, um, well, you want to know all dimensions in three directions. So I used two 
uh, probes of 0.3 millimeters, so 300 microns, which is 12 micro inch, I guess. Um, and I actually did some scanning on the surface, on this tiny surface. Wow. Uh, I, I scanned a side, uh, touched the other side, and I used the second probe uh, to measure the uh, other two sides uh, and the back. And and the the actual clamping it, uh, uh, fixturing it doesn't doesn't deform or alter the part in, in any way to affect the measurements. Yeah, that's a uh, that's a real challenge. Yes, uh, the this part was uh, made of hardened um, stainless steel, uh, so it's a bit tougher than uh, brass, for instance. If if the product was uh, was made of brass, I would probably have squeezed it uh, together. Right. Okay. Um, so, and and obviously, uh, you've done this uh, in a. Uh, you told me earlier you've got a temperature controlled room for your for your CMM and, and some of your other equipment. Um, just for readers who not uh, listeners who may not be aware of the effect of temperature changes or temperature gradients on measurements. Um, just tell us a little bit about that and why you actually need a, a really well temperature controlled room in order to make those types of measurements. If you have a small part like I um, uh, used with the contest, a uh, small part like that won't be affected by temperature very much. Uh, but if, but if uh, parts get bigger, even uh, just the size of my hand, um, if there are a lot of features to be inspected on this um, not so big uh, product, the uh, inspection time may well be 15 minutes, 30 minutes, or maybe more. Um, and you need the CMM to be absolutely stable during the inspection time, uh, during the run of the product. So um, uh, uh, slight temperature changes uh, will not uh, expand or uh, uh, shrink the product so much, but there's a um, uh, the, 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 the CMM is uh, build, built from uh, larger components, uh, just as the, the white beam uh, on the top, which is the X guideway. It's a meter long, which is uh, three feet. Um, uh, that will expand with slight temperature changes. So if you're on the far side of the table um, inspecting a bore, uh, let's say the position of the bore, you wait 15 or 30 minutes. Uh, you want the position of the bore to be exactly the same as you measured it the first time. Uh, and we're talking in microns here. Um, uh, you don't want it to be on a different spot. Uh, so uh, you want the temperature to be within a very narrow bandwidth um, to have proper measuring results. There are some uh, measuring machines uh, that offer software compensation for temperature changes, um, but it, it cannot do all the, the it cannot um, uh, uh, compensate for all the the, the, the nasty stuff that the temperature causes. Uh, so my idea is to be uh, better safe than sorry, uh, have the sure. temperature uh, 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 well uh, within a narrow bandwidth, and there's nothing to compensate at all. Yeah, this interesting point is that is that software compensation is out there for CMMs, but it is it is a guess. I mean, they're, they're, they're making, based on the temperature and con the construction of the machine, the software is making an assumption or sometimes following a table that says, okay, with this temperature change, we need to shift this much. But like you said, it's better just to keep the temperature stable as much as you can and not have to worry about compensation so much. You just, just do it right. <laughs> yeah, correct. And you, you often see a temperature compensation with uh, entry-level uh, CMMs which have uh, aluminum guideways. And I'm not sure if uh, the software compensation is a bonus or a necessity in that case. Now, I, and kind of my, my, maybe you've already answered this because I, I wasn't sure that you were using an actual production part for your, for your, uh, uh, for your challenge here, but, but you are. But um, did you learn anything by participating in this challenge, did you learn something that might be useful for you um, just in your own work? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, let me think. Um, well, I measured the part before, so that was not much of a learning experience, but um, just for the Zeiss contest, I, um, I shot a video of what I actually did using a microscope and uh, a pair of tweezers to, uh, to clamp the part. 
um, or, or to, to put the part, the part into the clamp. Um, so when I watched the video myself, I thought, well, uh, about a year ago, I hardly knew a thing about uh, an active scanning head uh, like the Zeiss has. Um, a video is a great way to show customers or prospects uh, what the thing does, and they might, um, uh, well, get the benefits uh, of it. So I thought uh, there's uh, some, um, that's what I learned from the, from the whole Zeiss um, contest. I think there's some uh, missionary work for me to do um, for the Holy Church of the uh, Active Scanning Head. All right. Well, Nabi, thanks for, um, thanks for coming on the show and kind of telling us about, about winning uh, or being one of the, the winners of that, of that challenge. Uh, really appreciate you taking the time for us. I know it's evening in your time. It's like, what, 7 o'clock or 8 o'clock in the evening for yeah, you? Correct. No, well, right. thanks for having me. It's a, it's a pleasure. Thank you. Nami, thanks for joining us today. I really appreciate you taking time. I, I realize it's, uh, it's late there in the Netherlands. Um, once again, thanks to all of you for joining us here for QDL. That is it for today's show. As usual, if you have uh, somebody who you'd like us to bring on the show or some topic you'd like us to cover, let us know, and we'll do our best to get them on. Uh, that is it for today. Thanks for joining us, and we will see you.